Hey, so today we're going to be playing with Yellow Steel Songs, the deck that I won the 8K with. I kind of wanted to like explain my thought process uh, as I played the game. Uh, I know this deck is a little complicated, but I think that once you see the way I make my decisions, it will become much easier to navigate um, the games. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to try and upload a hardcore match a day. So whatever matchup I end up getting, um, that's the matchup that I'm going to record. My goal is to get like, you know, the top eight decks. And um, yeah, so here's a list that I'm going to be playing. There's one change from the 8K and that is we're playing a second Rapunzel over the third Hades bring it down to a clean 20 uninkables um but yeah it's the standard sleepy flute song deck so let's uh let's jump into a match we're gonna be playing hardcore by the way so we don't know what we're gonna be playing against boom All right, so we're in the dark. We're going to, and we're going second. So here we're going to get rid of everything, including the bare necessities. If this was a Cinderella, maybe I keep the Let the Storm Rage on and the bear, but I really wanna have the highest chance of finding the Shift Robin here. So I will be getting rid of six cards so my approach is very aggressive especially with uh uninkables so we're we're very often getting rid of um un uninkables all right so in this situation we're thinking about what what we should play so we are, have the robin hood we can p either play the queen or the Robin Hoods to play towards um, a better draw. Um, in this spot, I think that I'm going to look to get rid of the Rapunzel. And I think I'm going to play the Robin Hood because I have the backup Robin Hood. Otherwise, I think it might have been correct to play the queen just because I could potentially turn to queen or I could draw something with Cinderella. So we're playing against purple green, which I think is a very favorable matchup. And we have the second whole new world that we want to get rid of. So, okay. So they bounce it back to hand. So now we don't really have anything that we can hit with. So in this spot, I think I'm looking to ink the queen. Pl 
play a Robin Hood, play a Cinderella, and pass the turn. So, what my thought process here is, is that we're likely to hold New World. But if we hit an inkable card, then it puts us in an amazing spot because we get to ink that card, take care of the Madam Mimba, in this case is going to be Ursula, using the strength of Raging Fire, and we still get to Whole New World if we would like. So we're playing against Purple Yellow. I don't think that it's very likely that they make us discard two cards. So I think I'm going to ink this play the Robin Hood sing this and I think I'm going to be a little greedy here and do this this is a pretty greedy play but my thought process here is that it's very unlikely that they're um, able to remove uh, the Robin Hood or make me discard both of the whole new worlds. Ursula hits one of the whole new worlds, which is not good. Um, if they're able to play another Ursula, that would be absolutely terrifying, but we are safe. So in this spot, we're going to thinking about what are cards that we could hit. I think I'm supposed to put this queen away because it may be that I want to cast um, a long king Zeus. So I'm going to leave myself open to that possibility. Okay, so in this spot, I think that we end up starting off by singing this Let This Storm Rage On, taking out this Cursed Marfolk. That's a wonderful hit. We will then play our Ariel. We'll grab another Let The Storm Rage On. There could have been an argument for playing the Ariel first, but m my thought process was if I hit flute it's very likely that I end up playing flute and bare necessities so I'll go ahead and play this other robin and then I'll quest for one so this is a pretty commanding position I think that our opponent has already lost So I'm doing these matches like in the morning. So basically what I'm going to do is like just do one match a day and hopefully I'm able to play against the matchup um, that you're struggling with. But I think that no matter what matchup I'm playing, just uh, talking through these lines um, and comparing them to the way that you're making decisions is going to be very, very impactful. So here I'm going to get rid of, the I'm actually going to get rid of, mm, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the bare necessities. I'm going to get a Cinderella active. I will go ahead and along came Zeus using the Ariel. Get rid of the Merlin. And then I'll use the Robin Hood to take care of the Ursula. Go to six. Go to nine, ten, eleven. Boom. And what a commanding position that we're in. If you think about this game, 
a lot of what was possible was because of that aggressive mulligan that I had, right? Literally, the last card I drew was the Robin Hood. So it, being that aggressive allows you to, to have the cards that you actually really want. So when I'm looking at this hand and I'm thinking about what is the matchup I'm playing against, I'm playing against a very aggressive deck. So these removal spells are really good. And these benjas are not so great, but what they are are inkable. And I already have the turn two queen and I have a backup Cinderella. So I think that I don't even get rid of any cards. I just keep the seven. And so if you were looking at the mulligan guide, you wouldn't be able to see this because um, the uh, like the the choices in Lorcana are infinite but what what this hand demonstrated was a game plan that will a hundred percent work rather than me taking the risk of potentially hitting uninkables right and so that's like a consideration that you want to take and that's like a skillful thing to be able to say hey I may draw on inkables here and that's something that you're considering with this deck as opposed to another deck where you're like oh i'm always gonna hit inkables but that's an option i'm willing to give up for the the immense power level of this deck right so in this situation i think that i'm going to ink the benja and i think i'm going to play a cinderella and the reason why is because if my opponent quests for two and then plays a Madame Mim, I would like to be able to remove the Madame Mim. And the way I'm going to do that is by playing two one drops and then playing the strength. Okay, Saj. That's a good job. I think the card that I would want to get rid of here is the strength of raging fire. So I think I just attack it, get rid of my strength, play the Benja. Yeah. It's ink the Benja and I actually think it's ink the Cinderella and play the Queen. Because it's possible that they play like spellbook and I would want the Benja for the spellbook. But I don't think that there is a world where I would play that Cinderella if I didn't play it that turn. Ah, oh, they knew about the queen. They chose not to remove the queen. Okay. I think we get rid of uh the bare necessities. I think I just play the aerial. It doesn't feel great in this spot. Uh but that's okay. I just feel like playing the queen, taking out the Ursula doesn't really accomplish anything. They can just trade those two for basically my two. And I don't think that is exactly winning me the game. Interesting. I feel like that's where they should have started. So we're definitely going to ink the Benja now. We will go ahead and shift the queen. We'll go ahead and play the Cinderella. 
and we will go ahead and take care of their big Ursula and then we'll go ahead and whole new world we managed to empty our hand we have a Robin but both big and small Robin Hood in hand so the play is obvious play the Robin Hood and now pass your turn so even though they're ahead on lore and on cards, uh, it's really more about the board presence. And so whether or not you should be whole new worlding is about what your board presence looks like, right? Like, do you, do you have a more commanding board presence than your opponent? If you do, then you use the whole new world to maintain that and continue to develop your board, you know? So... Oh, they use Mother Knows Best. That was a pretty nice play. So I'm trying to think about what we're going to do in this situation. I think that we're going to start off by shifting the Robin Hood. That's number one. Then I'm going to sing this Along Came Zeus to take out this Tinkerbell. I use this Robin Hood to take out the kit, getting me up to two. So we have an interesting decision here, whether we would like to try to redeploy this queen or get a flute in play. And I think the answer is flute because I don't want to ink anything else but a one drop. So I'm not going to be using both one drops. So we go up to four. And we still own the board. Like we dealt with a lot of their stuff and progressed our board and now have this thing that as long as we play a song, we'll continue to generate. They take our whole new world. That's totally fine. We have an aerial that will take us to more songs that can eliminate their threats and activate our sleepy flutes. Oh, baby, that's a good one. So we'll start off there. Solid. I'm trying to think what we 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 have nothing in the yard. We haven't lost a single card. So we'll go ahead and aerial. Yeah, we'll take that. And I think we'll go ahead and sing it. I just wanna own the board. Remember they're playing purple green and they can bounce their cards so my songs are in threat mode anyways so I might as well empty my hand own the board and put on the fastest clock I can think of and this is the way to do it alright so now we should think about what how much lore can we get it doesn't matter and we win so I hope that uh, the way the way that I mulliganed um, helped you understand how you would use the mulligan guide if you um, if you're unaware of what the mulligan guide that I'm talking about is it's a guide where I made a hierarchy of um, of what cards I would keep in my opening hand and it's just for reference because there are like thousands of possibilities if not more of hands and considerations and all of them are just going to be different so there's never going to be just a black and white here it is this is what you're supposed to do every single time type of situation and so um, I'll post a link of it in the description down below if you want to go check out the, the guide um, but yeah, uh, I hope you do well with this deck. It's, um, won me a lot of money, so good luck and, uh, have fun.